Hello, my name is Gemma and I work for Ruby and Wishing Well. This presentation is about transitions and it will help support parents and carers um, with some ideas about how they can support their children with transitions. So first of all, let's look at why transitions can be challenging if your child has additional needs. So if your child has additional needs, they may have difficulties with social communication. So for example, how they communicate with others, um, if they can understand their own emotions and if they can understand their peers' emotions or adults' emotions, whether or not they can read facial expressions or if they understand any gestures that people make towards them. Um, if they have difficulties in this area, this will make transitions and communicating what's happening during transitions difficult for them. Social interaction is another aspect that could make it difficult for children with additional needs during transitions. They may find it difficult when it's busy, um, if they, they find personal space an issue for them. They may find it difficult um, to interpret body language and, and what's going on at those times. If they find social relationships tricky, um, again with their peers or with interpreting relationships with adults, um, this could also um, pose some complications for them. And if they don't always pick up on what social cues um, there are and what's going on, this again could, could put some complications there for them during transition times. Um, the final aspect that, that could pose difficulties during transition is social imagination and rigid thought patterns. So during transitions, if um, a child perhaps lacks um, some empathy, um, that might be difficult for them to understand what's going on, perhaps for others, um, and, and what exactly is happening during those times. Um, they may feel agitated if routine is changing and, and why things are suddenly happening that are out of the ordinary or um, what change is going on that they aren't understanding at that time. Um, the child themselves might have some special interests or might have some obsessive behaviours that are perhaps, perhaps being disrupted by the transition which could cause them distress and discomfort um, so those things could be disrupted and unsettled by a transition which would be quite difficult for them to understand so those things um, could be affected during transition times. So if transitions and changes are conflicting with these aspects that I've mentioned um, a transition is going to be challenging on some level for um, a child to, to understand and to manage and to navigate. Um, so these things, these additional things are going to, be, to make it more, more complex for a child with additional needs. So um, next, moving on to some examples of transitions people might experience throughout their lives and there's a quite a few really I mean these are just some examples and I'm sure um, you can think of lots more yourself um, so these are just a handful so physical development um, you know as um, as we grow um, our bodies change and we change um, and that's something that a child has to um, understand and get used to. And um, families change um, and sometimes 
two families join together and um, step families um, are developed and created and that's a different change that um, children have to adapt to. Um, children develop personal interests and that can change over time. That's a gradual change normally um, but that does change um, and that is the transition. Loss and bereavement, um, that can be something sometimes that is slow, but sometimes it can be something that's quite abrupt, um, very sadly. Um, so if it is something that's unexpected, that obviously um, can be very sudden and can be very distressing um, for a young person with additional needs. Um, new family members can join families, which is a transition um, that can be quite uh, complex for a child to, to understand. Um, friendships change, um, and there are lots of complex feelings that can go along with that um, about understanding how, how you can share people and and how um, people don't leave you, they're still there, um, but, but thoughts and feelings change. Um, divorce and separation of parents is um, something that children um, do sometimes need to, to deal with and, and to manage and um, to adapt to. And that is the transition again that, um, that children sometimes need support with. Moving and leaving school, um, that could be year group, it could be um, to a different school because they've um, moved from their main school to their high school, or it could be moving area. Um, as with a parent or carer getting a new job, sometimes that means moving house, um, sometimes that means travelling a different route or something like that. So. There's quite a few different things that are linked in with a number of these transitions. So um, some of them are, are more complex than they perhaps appear, but there, there are a lot of transitions that are, um, are there in our lives, really. So um, here is a transition scale. Um, this talks about um, showing a progression um, of a scale that may occur within the um, school environment, for example. So it shows why a transition um, may, may prove to be quite challenging, um, but how um, these aspects, um, some of them may have more complexity than, than others and how some of them are less challenging than others. So we've got at the top there a physical move from home to school, and this may cause a major interruption to routine, but then we've got a physical move that may be unfamiliar environment, a physical move that could be close environment, um, an unfamiliar route of physical move, an unfamiliar person leading the physical move, a change to timing of familiar transition, an expected change in person's presence, a change in seating layout, a change in supporting staff, an unusual response from familiar person, a change, a small change in environment, switching to task, and mentally switching focus. So as you see from the bottom to the top, it shows how this would be the progression in how challenging these would be. So right at the bottom, mentally switching focus wouldn't actually cause as much distress as, as you get to the top where you've got physically a move from home to school would cause the most um, distress um, in terms of this transition scale. So it shows how um, each one of these becomes increasingly more complex in terms of the transition. Um, but actually all of them at some level would be quite challenging for a young person to cope with. 
but actually some of them are um, easier to resolve and easier to tackle than others. Um, but all of them on some level are quite challenging and, and would be, um, you know, difficult for a, for a young person to, to cope with at a level, but some are higher complexity than others. So we move on to now looking at some um, effective transition strategies. Um, obviously, all of these are um, individual um, to the, the child. Um, every child is different. And, you know, what may be appropriate for one child may not be for another. So, um, you know, they may be helpful to you, they may not. Um, it's totally up for you to make your judgment as to whether or not you feel it would be appropriate for your child. So first of all, this is the now and next strategy. Um, so this is um, to, to ensure that your child knows what's coming next. Um, you may have seen um, now and next um, visual prompt uh, before where you would use a picture schedule um, or alternate it between preferred and non-preferred activity and stick to a schedule. So you might be able to use pictures or text or in some cases you might need to use objects to represent an activity. Um, so you would have now whatever it is you're doing at the moment and then next you're going to do something else. So to get used to using it, you would always have as the preferred um, what you're doing next as an activity that's preferred um, so that you would encourage um, the child uh, to want to move on to the preferred activity um, until it, the use of the now and next um, strategy is um, you're, you're confident with the use of it and then you can introduce other um, uh, other activities as well. So um, there's a transition um, using an object or transition using music. So this would be perhaps if you wanted to move from one activity to another you could use an object. So for example if you wanted to go from the classroom to the dining room, you could introduce a special teddy as a lunch buddy teddy. So when you finish the classroom activity, you could say, all oh, right, it's lunchtime now, get the lunch buddy teddy. And then you would go from the classroom to the dining room and take the lunch buddy teddy with you. And that would be the signal that it's lunchtime and that you're going to go to lunch with the lunch buddy teddy. Um, to use a transition music, you would select a piece of music of a certain particular length and that piece of music would signal that it was tidy up time and that would be the music that would play while the classroom or the bedroom or wherever would be um, tidy for that length of time um, and it would signify the end of um, the activity or the end of playing. Um, another strategy, make sure um, that you don't rush, that you give extra time. Um, when you think back to the things that might be causing um, those difficulties um, for your child, that you need to make sure that you're giving lots of extra time. Taking a sensory break might be helpful. Um, so, for example, that could be a movement break or a tactile break. Um, so, good examples might be using a mini trampoline, little trampette or something, or bouncing on a therapy ball, or using a scooter board. Um, Rubies have scooter boards available to borrow from their sensory resource library, so that could be an option. Um, or you could use a fidget toy or maybe listen to some music. All of those would be appropriate, appropriate sensory breaks. Um, next strategy, time. So make it clear how much longer the activity will last. Um, you could use a visual timer maybe um, or countdown or give a warning ahead of time. 
Um, next strategy, being prepared. So make sure that there's clear structure and consistency. Um, organise the materials um, and make sure you've got clearly defined uh, spaces. Um, so you need to have routines, clear timetables, uh, predictable safe structure. Um, on the wall you can have your calendars on a monthly and weekly basis and have your daily schedule. Um, and it just helps make sure that the boundaries and expectations are really clear. So um, you can have that at home, but you can also have that in a school environment as well. Um, practice can help. Um, so, for example, using social stories and preparing for certain situations. So using pictures or using photos. Um, or trying to reinforce important messages um, and helping any difficulties that you might anticipate before you're going to do a transition. So if you're worried about travelling from a certain building to the car because you're concerned about the safety point, then if you've got a social story that addresses that, then preempt the situation and go over it before so you've addressed it before it's occurred or before you're concerned it may occur and then you address it before and you've anticipated it that it may happen so hopefully by addressing it before then you've preempted it and you're, you're doing your best to sort of uh, address it and teach teach it and teach to to support um, so that you've addressed what could potentially have been the trigger. Use distractions. So some examples might be music, bubbles, movement activities, um, or anything that will help get the child to move from A to B. Have a way to signal that an activity is over. So for example, you could turn off the lights, use music, or clear things away. Um, making wait time less challenging is always helpful. So again, you could use movement breaks for this. You could use fidget toys. Um, you could use music, or you could use timers. Um, and then looking at problems that may occur in school if there were transitions. And again, with this, these are just ideas. Um, you know, all children are different. So this is just some suggestions. Um, you know, it might not be the case for your child. So, you know, only take from it what you feel is appropriate. Um, so if the child doesn't respond when an adult speaks to them, it might be that the child's name um, needs to be used and that would help. At the end of the school day, um, the child doesn't get ready to leave and doesn't pack up. So something to address this might be to prepare a visual schedule for the child to make sure they know the routine. Um, if the child starts off tasks well, but loses motivation very quickly and refuses to finish them, it could be that for that child in particular, that they need something to help motivate them or they need something to reward them. Um, or, or it could be that they need something to help emotionally regulate them during the day and they need some sensory breaks in the day to help support them. Um, if the child seems to be distracted by labels on their uniform, um, it could be that they are struggling with some sensory differences and it could be that they need their labels um, removing or stitching flat onto their clothing, something like that. So finally, um, just some elements to consider during transitions and these are sort of individual things that perhaps need exploring. Um, and we're going to end on these. So these are just some final aspects 
that would need exploring on an individual basis. So transitions, are there clear visual plans? Have you explored noise, noise levels, smells, lights, different textures? Are different textures causing problems, difficulties? Is it a case of needing to build tolerance up? Timing, is timing an issue? Is it a certain time of the day? A schedule or a plan? Research and preparation. Could a worry doll or a worry monster support? Do you need to keep a diary? Are there communication needs? If an advocate is required for the child, um, over or under stimulation, if that's what is going on. Awareness of body position or movement. So these aspects here are really to consider for individual differences really and there needs to be a consideration from a sensory point of view and sensory differences if there's other aspects going on within transitions that are impacting on how children are responding um, in certain situations and how they could be best supported and that sometimes needs to be explored a little bit. As I've mentioned, all children are different and they will all behave differently in different situations. And sometimes there needs to be some investigation work as to why they're doing different things and what how they respond to things and why they respond that way and um, how best to help them self soothe and how best to help them emotionally regulate. So sometimes there needs to be um, some discussion with the children and sometimes there needs to be some watching and observing and sometimes there needs to be um, quite a bit of um, learning in terms of um, working with your child to find out what works for them.